What's up everyone? My name is Nick and welcome back to Digital Manufacturing and Design. Today we're going to take a look at the SOLIDWORKS part that we just finished drawing for the NIMS 98431. We can tell that this is a fully blown CAD model because over here on the left hand side inside of our feature tree we have all of our features that we can see and we can edit them as we see fit so I can open up one of these cuts and it can change it if I want to change the depth of it. You can see that there are dimensions that are linked to each one of these sketches that are linked to the features themselves. So we can go inside this and we can totally change it or revision management as we see fit. But what's this, uh, what's the problem with this right now is that we have it inside of a native SOLIDWORKS file. If I wanted to transfer this out and maybe send it to somebody who isn't using SOLIDWORKS, say for example, Inventor or Pro-E, they actually can't open the native SOLIDWORKS part because if I file and then I save as this, you can see that there is a SLDPRT extension that's located here next to the SOLIDWORKS part. Uh, so we're going to have to take this file, this fully blown 3D CAD model, and we're going to have to dumb it down to transfer it across other softwares. So again, if I was inside SOLIDWORKS and I had this native SOLIDWORKS file, if I sent this out as is to somebody with Inventor or Pro-E, they wouldn't be able to open it just because of that file extension. If I wanted to send it to them, I have to dumb it down and I have to compress it down to what we call a dumb solid. So the way that I do that is I go to File, Save As, and there's three main file types that we can compress it down to to be a dumb solid. And that's going to be, and we can change our file type right here, uh, it's going to be an IGIS, an STEP, and there's two types of STEPs. I would probably prefer using the STEP AP214, and then the Parasolid. So again, that's an IGIS, a step file, and then uh, parasol. I prefer to use the parasols in most cases. I found that that seems to be the easiest or the most flexible and the most accurate when I'm uh, exporting things out. So I'm gonna select parasol here. And the reason why I'm choosing that is, and I'll just save over the last one that I have. Um, I'll export all the bodies. That's fine. And the reason why I choose that is because I had some problems with uh, IGES files not pulling in all the faces. There can be errors. And we'll have to go through and maybe do a little bit extra work. Uh, STEP files, step files, um, they're going to keep some of the color that you guys put inside of the files. Obviously, this doesn't have color. I haven't really done anything for uh, a visual model in this case, so I'm just going to bypass that one. But we can import this. So let's pretend that we were an inventor or Pro-E and we sent this out as a dumb solid and now I'm receiving it and trying to open inside SOLIDWORKS. It would be very similar if you guys were trying to open this uh, in one of those softwares as well. But if I go to File, Open, and I'm gonna change, I'm gonna move this picture of me, I'm gonna change these all files, or if it's native to just a SOLIDWORKS file, I'm just gonna change it to all files here. And I'm going to look for the uh, Parasol file. So I know that this one, I'm gonna properties it, check it out. This is going to be, doo -doo -doo, I believe this one is going to be my Parasol file right here. So I'm gonna double click on this. We're just looking for that Parasol extension. And we're gonna notice here uh, on the left-hand side, I have my feature tree. There's nothing in it except for an imported body. That's okay. Uh, again, when it compresses it down to the dumb solid, it gets rid of all of those features inside of SOLIDWORKS and it tries to create just a single body, trying to transfer it across other programs. But inside SOLIDWORKS, and just like how you would kind of receive this in uh, Inventor or Pro-E, um, do you want to run import diagnostics? I'm going to hit yes. And we're going to see that there are no faulty faces. There are no gaps. Again, I have some errors working with uh, IGES files sometimes uh, with the faulty faces and the gaps. But I'm going to hit the green check mark. So there's nothing to repair on this. And it's going to ask me here, do you want to proceed with the feature recognition? Something that's really awesome about SOLIDWORKS is it tries to rebuild it if I hit the yes button uh, as if it was drawn inside SOLIDWORKS itself. So I'm going to hit yes. It's going to take a second to go through this. And what it's going to do is it's going to recognize um, all these features. I got to select some of the features that I want to, it, it's recognized here. I'll just hit the green check mark. But what it's going to do is it's going to go through and rebuild the part as if it was drawn inside SOLIDWORKS. So it's going to recognize all those features and then draw them as sketches and then extrude them as features as well. So if you look over here on the left hand side on my feature tree, look at all of these features that were just populated. So before it just had a body. I couldn't edit that body, it was just a single body. But now I've expanded it and I've done my feature recognition. And I can see that if I open up one of these features and I edit the sketch, 
Now all of my dimensions have changed or have disappeared rather, but I can go in here and I can smart dimension this and we can see that all those dimensions are still true. Now this becomes a problem because inside SOLIDWORKS you will have to kind of reverse engineer it or take the painstaking effort to go ahead and uh, dimension everything, but it does a really great job um, transferring it across uh, softwares because it just reads that dumb solid. It tries to recognize any of the uh, existing information that is uh, uh, associated to it and it tries to rebuild it into what we would call a smart solid or a fully blown, three, fully blown 3D CAD model. So hopefully that helps you guys out when you're transferring files across uh, different platforms and we'll see you in the next video.